Hi, this is Linear Algebra 2.5, Matrix Factorizations, or in this case we're going to do LU Factorization. And why do we do LU Factorization? Well, it's because we want to make uh, the time that it takes a computer to do a solving of a system, make it faster. And so if we can, and if you do repeated times for particular Bs, and maybe we have lots of different Bs here, and we want to do this over and over again, if we factor the matrix first, then it will reduce the number of calculations that we need to solve the system. So for computing's sake, it's a great thing. So the basics of this, we're going to go ahead and make an echelon form of A, and that will become an upper matrix. So an upper matrix looks like this, where we have zeros in the lower portions. This is a three by three, but this holds true for any dimension that you do have. So the main diagonal will have numbers on it, and everything above will have certain numbers in it. It might be zero, but definitely zeros down here. Then the lower matrix has numbers down below, and then zeros up above. The ones are on the main diagonal for the lower. We don't care for the upper what ends up being there. And then we record our steps. What did we do in order to get these zeros in our upper matrix that we do end up with? And then we're going to put that into a matrix with the opposite signs, in other words, the inverse, and to find the lower matrix. Then we have our LU. Once we have LU, then we can go ahead and solve some other things. Uh, from what we've been building on a little bit, so if we have a 3 by 3 matrix, and I guess it doesn't matter dimension for this, well, it would be because there's three things. But what we can do is that if we know that we can take an elementary matrix, multiply by A in order to start eliminating, in other words, we want to like eliminate this value right here and turn it into a zero, that would be matrix E1. If I want to go ahead and eliminate this to make this a zero, like it is in the U now, then I would maybe have the E2. And if I want to reduce this one to zero, then I would have my E3 matrix. And so with all those matrices, matrices multiplied by A, all I got to do in order to solve for A is take the inverse. And notice that we go in the reverse order of what we applied here, because that's one of our nice little theorems that we do have. And so then you can go ahead and find A based upon this matrix and the U. Well, this matrix then becomes L. That's about it. Now, it seems maybe kind of funny, but it's not so bad. Uh, when we have to go ahead and use uh, the factorization, in order to solve the process, you have to do two steps. You have to solve Ly is equal to B, and then Ux is equal to Y, and that will get you home. That will give us our X in order to solve this system right here. So example one, we're going to see if we can do this two different ways, but we're going to find the LU factorization of the matrix A equals the vector 3, 2, and then we have 1, 4. So we first of all want to eliminate this 2. 2 by 2 isn't so bad. So if I do this over here, I have my 3, 1, 2, 4. If I eliminate this 2, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to multiply the top row by my negative 2 thirds, and then that would go ahead and eliminate that value. So with this, the negative 2 thirds times 3 gives me negative 2 plus 2 gives me my 0. Negative 2 thirds times 1 gives me negative 2 thirds. When I add that to 4, that should give me 3 and 1 third, positive 10 thirds. I believe I did that right. So now this is in the form of the upper, so I'm already done with my upper. That's pretty easy, not bad. So that's my upper that I do need. Now i got to go ahead and find the lower. Well, the lower is formed by making the matrix and using this value right here. But remember, it has to be the inverse of that. So we put this into the matrix that has ones on the diagonal. And then I'm going to put a two thirds here. And then I'm going to have, it is a lower matrix. So I'm going to have that right there. And that's what my L is. Now notice what happens. I don't have to do this all the time if I do the calculations correctly. But I want to go ahead and multiply by my u and see what I do get, because I should definitely get my A matrix back. So the only one that's maybe even slightly complicated is taking the 2 thirds times the 1, 
which would give me 2 thirds, and then the 1 times the 10 thirds, add them together, I'm going to get 12 thirds. That would give me my 4 here. And sure enough, that is what I started off with. Let's call this method 1. Okay, and so now we want method 2. This is what the uh, book will do for its method, which would be similar, but uh, it's just how you, you know, how you do the algorithm, I guess, is what we're looking for. So you start off identically to what you did before, and this would give you your U matrix. Okay, then to find the lower, what you do is you take this first column where you end up with a pivot, and the, yeah, there's the pivot right there, and you're going to go ahead and write that down here. And what you do with that is that you keep on doing this if the matrix is bigger, but with this matrix, I only have this one. Now you look for this lead term, and we know that we want this thing right here to be a 1. So what do I got to do to the 3 in order to make it a 1? Well, I need to divide by 3. And so to do that, I'm going to get a 1, and I'm going to get a 2 thirds. And we know that we have 1s along the diagonal, and it's a lower matrix, so this is a zero right here. And so this is the other way to get the matrix. Okay, So this is the lower, and then this is the upper. So that's just a little bit different way to do this. So wherever you have the pivot, you're going to bring this down and put it there, and then divide by this value, and then that would give you the values in that column, either way. This follows more the mathematics of what I did before with the elementary matrices. And then this one is just kind of a different algorithm that gets you there. Now our AX equal to B is turning into LU X is equal to B. Those are vectors, so I should have that, but it's okay. And so I've written this down here. And so what do we do with that? So we want to do LY is equal to B. Well, this Y is the same thing as the UX. And so we can solve for this. And once we get that answer, we're going to take that and then do, solve that out. And that's essentially what we're doing. So we can go ahead and find this X. So I can set up that form of it right here. And then I'm just going to do an augmented matrix in order to solve this. So I get 2 thirds. 1, and then I get my 1, 0. Then I'm going to have to get rid of this 2 thirds here. So now this is my y, and so now I need to solve this system here. ux is equal to y. So with a similar setup, here's my augmented matrix, and then I want to do row reduction on this augmented matrix in order to figure out what my solution is. Go ahead and try that, and then I'll try it too and come back. So I ended up with x1 is equal to 2 fifths, and x2 is equal to negative 1 fifth. And I punched that into my calculator to do row reduced echelon form on the original augmented matrix, and this is the same thing as what I got. Now you might say, wow, Mr. Zitour, this is a lot of work. What do you mean this is easier? Well, it is easier, so once you get into bigger, bigger matrices, and, for instance, if this B value, this B value right here, if you have many, many Bs, and you have to do the same thing over and over and over again, then it makes it a lot easier. Well, why would that be? Well, it just reduces the number of steps that you do have in order to do these calculations. So computer programming world, it is, it is shorter, it is easier, and so that's what we're setting up. And then you might say, well, why can't I just put it into my calculator and solve it. Well, somebody had to program that. And so this is an idea for you on programming as well. And I can go quickly go through these steps that I did for you too. Uh, I just took each one of these rows and I divided by the leading term. So I divided this one by three and I got this. Divided this one by 10 thirds and I got that. So right away I know that the x2 is equal to negative one fifth. And then all I have to do is take this multiply by negative one third, add this by negative one third, and add. I got the little addition here, and then I end up with the two fifths, and then the negative one fifth. Let's go on to a three by three. Maybe you can jump ahead and try that under what we've done. 
Okay, so we're going to find the LU factorization of this matrix A, which now it is a 3 by 3. So let's row reduce it. I'm going to skip right over to that one and uh, get to the U. And you try that as well. Pause this. So I multiplied by negative 2 here in order to wipe out this value right here. So I get 0, 1, 4. And then I'm going to take 3 and multiply it by this value in order to wipe out this negative 6. So I get 0, 8, negative 2. See if you got that. And I recorded both of those values here. And then I'm going to do another step. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate this 8 right here. Well, I can deal with this one by multiplying by negative 8 and adding. So there I have it. That is my U. If I want my L, all I got to do is, remember it's going to be lower items, and L has ones on the diagonal. Which values do I put in? Well, I'm going to go ahead and put in this negative 2, this 3, and this negative 8, except for, what do I have to do? Yes, I have to make them the opposite. So this is going to be a 2, this would be a negative 3, and this would be a, an 8. And then I'm going to get 0, 0, 0. So there is my LU factorization for that one. If I use method 2, I'm just going to take the column where I have a pivot, and in this case, and we're, we're going to keep this pretty, pretty straightforward. We're not going to have odd-shaped matrices, which you can do, but we're going to take this first column that has a pivot, so it's this one right here, and write that out. Now, on the 2x2, two two, we didn't have the next step. But we do have the next step, and what you do is you go ahead and truncate this column by just whatever is left. And so I'm going to do the 1 and the 8. I didn't need that. And now I had you go ahead and divide this one by whatever is going to make that 1. So you're going to divide this one by 2. You're going to divide this one by 1 because that leading term is 1. And then you're going to get your values in your matrix. So then this would be a 1, 2, negative 3. And then this one would be a 0, 1, 8. And then you're just going to have a 0, 0, 1 for your third call. Same thing to get your L or your U. You figure out which method. But if you're looking in the book for a little bit of help, they're going to be using method 2. And don't forget to put in the opposite signs because we're actually finding the inverse to get to this L. And that's why the signs are opposite. So when we go ahead and solve this, remember that we've got to do L, Y is equal to B, and then UX is equal to Y. I started kind of rolling here, but I made my augmented matrix, and then I want to go ahead and reduce. And if you notice, when you reduce these, they aren't so bad. Maybe just... Uh, couple steps that you got to do, but then I'm going to get rid of this 2 right here by going ahead and multiplying this by negative 2. I'm going to get a 0. Negative 2 times 0 plus 1 gives me the 1. I get zeros again, but now here I'm going to take a negative 2, multiply by 3, and I'm going to get negative 6 plus my 1, which would give me negative 5. Multiply the top row by 3. And this will give me a 0, and then this will give me an 8, and then this will give me a 1, and then I'd have 3 times my 3, and then add here, so that would give me another 8. Then I'm going to multiply by this one by negative 8 up here in order to add, and so then I'm going to get, this is kind of hard to show, but I'm going to get zeros here. Negative 8, this would give me the 0 right here now. And then I'm still going to end up with the 1 there. And then negative 8 times 5 plus that 1 will give me that last value. So now this is my y, which is the same thing as my ux up here. So that's my y. Okay, so now I just got to solve one more with my u. So I'm just going to divide this last one by 34, and everything will come into place from that. So now I'm almost done here, and I just take this last step, two last steps, but I want to multiply this one by negative 1 to eliminate this value here. So I'm going to get 2, 0, 0, and I'm going to take the negative and put it into that. So it's 16 over 17, 
and then I have 0, 1, 0, 11 over 17, and 0, 0, 1, negative 24 over 17. Then I'm just going to take this last one and divide by 2 so that this would just be a 1, and then this would be an 8. And then here's my answer, which I dealt with te with technology. Okay? So this should work. LU factorization. Yeah, it seems like it's a lot more steps, but uh, give it a shot. I didn't give you too many problems to get in there. But uh, try them and see if you can break some of them up. Okay? I hope you enjoyed this. This is LU factorization in linear algebra, section 2.5. Have a great day.